Hi everyone, thanks for tuning back in again. Um, just a quick introduction for this video. This is all about how I've wired in all of the electrics uh, for my Koi tank, um, air pump, um, barrier pump with float switch, and I go through like the full wiring diagram and instructions for wiring in your float switch properly, um, and also the UV. So I just give a quick demonstration of how to just check you haven't introduced any live current into the water in your uh, in your tank or your pond. So. Thanks for watching. Um, as usual, I hope you find this video useful in some way. Uh, if you've got any questions, comments, if you think I've done anything wrong, please put me a comment below just so that we can have a chat about it. And if I have, I can correct it. So awesome. Thanks for tuning in. Let's get straight on. Take care. Here's some of the bits I'm going to be fitting. So I bought some new plugs. Ooh. Um, and I've taken all the 13 amp fuses out and be replacing them with three amp fuses. Um, I've got my connection block for me, float switch and a waterproof connection box to put that in. Um, one thing to make sure you do when you install these is just drill a little hole at the bottom here. See where my little finger is here? Um, just in case they do leak, then the water can actually escape rather than it filling up and obviously gradually bzz. Um I'll show you how we're gonna be wiring this into the outside. I've got a circuit breaker there. Cheeky little wire through the wall which comes through here into one of these classic ever ready waterproof boxes. I'm going to mount that on the wall about there, I reckon, and then come inside me, filter house and then uh, get it all wired in. That's that mounted on the wall, all labeled up. I like my matching plugs. Um, I'm going to have to get some sort of conduit just to tidy this up. I'll just put some cable ties on it for the, Meantime, just to keep it all together. Um, I've kept a bit of slack. All goes underneath that shelf. Air pumps down there. And there we go. Right, I'm gonna be doing a little video on how to wire in one of these float switches. The instructions that come with them are not the easiest to follow. Um, I've done an unboxing video where I, I pause on the instructions, so I'll put a link in the description below so you can have a look at that. Um, I've got a light here just so that I can check it's working properly before I then replace that with the pump. Um, got a connector block, screwdriver, and some wire strippers. So without further ado, let's get to it. So strip the ends of the wires off. These are great, these little tools. There we go, just enough to fit in the old block. For the purposes of installing this in the pond, it works in two different ways. The way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna have this wire attached to the top of my tank and this floating on the surface so that when it gets to a certain level, that's when it'll cut the pump off it. Um, and it also has the counterweight where you can slide that onto the to the cable and again you can have that dragging it down in certain different ways but so here's how it's wired blue is the mains cable plugs into the wall the white goes to the lamp or the pump and obviously the black one here is the float switch you notice that you don't need the blue wire for the float switch just to try and break this down what we basically have is the live from the um, mains connected straight to the live of the pump. The earth cable, again from the mains straight through to the earth cable on the pump. And then uh, the neutral is where you introduce the float switch. So from the mains, you come in and then connect it to the brown wire of the float switch. And then you come back from the float switch from the black wire to the neutral on the mains. So that's that's essentially what you need to, to do to wire this in so that <clears throat> basically when it's floating on the surface of the water, you've got uh, a connection and when it drops, it switches the pump off. So here's the wiring diagram from the instruction manual. Um, the M, that's your pump. Um, so as you can see, you just have to pass, live goes straight into the pump and then the neutral 
that just bypasses through the float switch and as you say yes yeah, a neutral into the black wire and then brown wire then connects back to the pump uh, and as you see here the blue wire is, is not required in this setup that's where i'm putting the float switch so i've put the counterweight there so i need to just double check on this once i've got water in the tank but that should hang like that the counterweight should keep it so that it it floats up and keeps the switch on and then as the water drops listen to when the ball changes it will switch off when it gets to there so might need a bit more slack on it but that'll it's about halfway down the tank yeah if i think i will just adjust that a little bit more just pull some more cable through about there but i need to see how it how it floats when it's got got the water in so that should be about there and then yeah it will switch off yeah about halfway down um i just need to make sure as well that it doesn't because that's where my uh bio filter is going to go i don't want it to if it drains sit on the top and stop it from uh switching off so i just need to just have a little tweak with it i think um but yeah so i can also just feed the cable now around the outside this is three meters long so hopefully it'll reach oh i better check that no it don't only comes to there so i'm actually gonna have to put it over there which means it's then going to be near the outlet i don't think that'll cause a problem but i wanted it there so that it didn't get disturbed by the water flow but it should be all right okay there we go that's better and the wire now comes through and it's going to drop into and drill a little hole in the back of that so we can pop through here and then i've got this little weatherproof little box there so i can wire the switch in there to the pump let's do it so there we go i've moved the uh float switch which seems to be sitting much better I'm not going to get tangled up in the air hoses or get caught on the top of the filter there just going to make sure i have all of my electrical appliances going uv on that's all now working all right so i've got my av on pumps on airs on so now all my electrical appliances are on so i've just basically got a voltmeter here set up as a voltmeter for alternating current which is obviously um mains and as you can see i've just put the positive electrode into the tank and I've got the negative one here. And there's two ways I'm gonna do this, just to be on the safe side. So I know my plumbing in the house is earthed. So if I touch this on here, that will create a circuit. And if there's any voltage going through the pond, this will show it. And as we can see, there is none, which is all good. Um, but if you haven't got something close by where you can earth this, you can always do what I've done here. So I've just got a bit of wire the end off poked it in a hole in the in the ground because earth literally means earth there we go have a pair of pliers and then get the other end here touch it onto the electrode and again we can see reading no volts so we know that i haven't introduced any electrical current into the pond which is quite good to know because at the end of the day i've seen some other People have issues whereby they can have a faulty UV that can crack uh, and then water gets into the electrical contacts and again electrifies the pond, you just don't know. Um, or, you know, this here could be damaged. That's got the full 240 volt current running through it as part of the pump circuit. So they could quite easily, you know, have a crack in it, be faulty, and I just wouldn't know and the pond would be electric electrified. So yeah, just a quick safety check. Thought it was worth passing that on. Last thing we want to be doing is electrocuting ourselves, do we? It's not ideal.